G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, I've been pushing on doing work in the workshop and I've been working on those old chisel handles that are all beat up. Look at this one, I mean, it's all split and stuffed. This one's all buggered. This one's even more buggered. And, you know, when they're done up, they should look like this. You know, I mean, that's one that's not damaged. It's a good, it's a good chisel. So, what do the chisels look like now that used to have these handles on? Well, I'll show you. So this one here, which is in a sad, sorry state, went from that to that. How does that look? We'll come in close on it. So there it is. This is black butt. It's a type of really hard eucalyptus. And I knocked off the ferrule, knocked out the center punches, fitted it on, re-center punched it so it's locked on. And then I turned up a metal collar for the end. Out of some close to stainless steel. It's not actually stainless, but it's it's pretty good pretty non-rusting and then I stained it with a bit of uh, this stuff just rubbed it on and I've yet to seal it I'll seal it with some uh, probably armour or same as I did last time so that one turned out really nice I was pleased with that I did the wood turning on the shoreblum and then this morning I did this one once again that was this handle have a look at that so I had a bit of a job getting the taper right because you know back in these this is old and it's not even dead center the way they've made this so when you're trying to fit the taper it takes a bit of doing and yeah I'll show you the trick I use to get uh, close fitting close tolerance fits to do it without marking the in this case it's timber normally I'd use Prussian blue which is a, or sharpie pen you can use that too but in this case being wood well, we don't want to mark it with any inky stuff so what you use is a good old candle you just get a candle you light it and of course the handle's not fitted so you hold the tapered bit over the top close and that makes it go smoky and it smokes up the inside of the taper and then you try it to, for fit push your handle in that you've been turning up and when any high spots it will leave the black soot there same as if you're using Prussian blue except of course Prussian blue would leave a stain in the timber so you can't use Prussian blue so yeah there's a trick it's an old timer's trick. You can use it for wood, metal, anything that doesn't burn, basically. Uh, you know, in this case, we, we smoke the, the steel and then put it on the wood. You know, you wouldn't want to try smoking the, smoking the wood or you have a fire. But, yeah, used correctly, it works really well. And you can get very accurate uh, fitting and matching with it because it's, uh, it's, it's not oily or greasy and it doesn't move around like you can get with well say Prussian blue even if it's on too heavy that will be a problem so Sharpie's good Sharpie pen texture pen works good but of course how do you get it up inside the taper you see you can't and uh, even Prussian blue you'd have to use a cotton bud or something like that so yeah just hold that vertically over the over the candle and smoke it up inside it won't hurt it and uh, then you just fit your uh, your job and see how it goes. I got very, very close and took me quite a while to get that last little bit. And I actually wondered about heating this up hot and then fitting it in and basically smoking, burning the, the high spots off. You know, you could do it, but then I was worried about ruining the temper, so I didn't do that. But, you know, if it wasn't critical, if it wasn't... Um, Temper critical, well, yeah, you could do that too on 
on situation with timber. But uh, yeah, so anyway, that's that's where we're at. And uh, oh, this one here, I cleaned up the end of that. This one's okay, actually. Well, it's not bad. It'll do for now. And I ground it back. It was all burnt over, and then I put a bit of stain on it. So yeah, I've got some decent looking chisels now, and uh, things are a lot better than they were. I wasn't actually going to shoot a video, and then uh, I sort of cleaned up all my mess. You know, there was sawdust everywhere, and I just vacuumed it all up. You can see there's still stuff on the on the chuck. You know, once again, it won't hurt your lathe if you, you know, cover up, clean up, and uh, you know, people get paranoid about this stuff. Oh, you know, I couldn't use wood on my lathe. You know, it might cause a problem. That's bullshit. You know, I mean, look, there's a bit of bit of dust on there, well that wipe off with a bit of rag and chip as good as new again. And of course over here the old Chinese lathe, she, uh, she's good because I could finish off, once I cut the, you know, the, the ends off the wood I could finish up with that big three jaw scroll chuck. Now this is basically another interesting thing to look at too, coming close and look at that. That's a chuck I paid 25 bucks for at a flea market and then I made up a backing plate for it out of a flywheel off of an old treadmill motor, cast iron. And the beauty of this chuck is it's got a really big throat. It's 6 inch and the standard scroll chuck for this lathe is 5 inch. I'll show you the 5 inch. That's the 5 inch. You can see there's a huge difference between 5 inch and six inch, it's probably 50% heavier. And the four jaw chuck, the four jaw is also a six inch. So there's the four jaw. Once again, these are big, heavy chucks. The problem is that when people buy lathes, they often don't think about the chuck size and what it really means. And what it means is, if you are going to be changing chucks to go from three jaw to another three jaw or three jaw to four jaw or three jaw to collet chuck, you're going to have to hunt these mothers around and they are heavy, believe me, they are damn heavy. Now that's only six inch. If you go bigger, you go to a lady that's got an eight inch chuck, you're going to need a crane or you're going to need a block or something what I'm saying is changing chucks is going to be an absolute bloody pain in the ass, And that's why I think a 10 inch swing lathe with a 5 inch chuck, 6 inch maximum, is a, a, good, a good workshop size. And uh, certainly, I mean, I've never been found lacking on this particular size lathe in all the years I've had it. And uh, yeah, that says a lot. You can do a lot with a 10 inch swing. So anyway... There's a bit more inf information for you. If you're going to buy a lathe, in my opinion, don't go past a six inch chuck because you're the one that's going to have to change them. And believe me, it's not like a one step situation. If you want to swap a chuck over, you're going to handle that chuck four times. Remember that, four times you're going to handle a chuck. You're going to have to take off the one that's on there. You're going to have to put on the one that you want to fit. When you finish, you're going to have to take off the one that's been fitted and you're going to put back the one that was there originally. That's a lot of changing, and that's just one change. So if you're going to do collets as well, there's another four changes. I mean, okay, the, the collet chuck is not heavy, but certainly chucks are not light when they get to the, this sort of size. And also, if you ever take one off, always keep it in this position Never put it like that because it can it could roll off and land on your foot. If you put it that way, that's never going to happen. And it pays to actually keep the jaws out a little bit when you take them off so that they got no chance of rolling. In this case, this is a board out of the top, top of the, the drawer, one of the drawers, and uh, I use that as the base for taking chucks off and putting them back on. So anyway, there's a bit of uh, information for you. You can see what I'm up to. And 
yeah, things are moving along. So there's a bit of eye candy for you. It just shows you what's happening and also just a few tips there on things to think about, things to watch out for and uh, yeah, an old timer's trick with a bit of soot that can get you out of jail. Okay, see you next time. Cheers.